Well, thanks. Just under seven minutes remaining here in the first half. There's the SEC standings. Vanderbilt alone on top. And the only undefeated team still in conference play. And they tangle with Kentucky Saturday afternoon at Rupp. As Lowell was talking about, Ole Miss right there on the heels of Mississippi State. The Bulldogs trying to keep their one-game lead. And they do lead here by two with 6.52 remaining in the first half. Neither team shooting well, right around 23% for Arkansas, 25% for Mississippi State. Fred, Mississippi State is one out of 10 right now from the three-point line. And through the month of November and December and the first of January, this was one of the better three-point shooting clubs in the nation, not just in this league. Rayburn Johnson has really struggled. And this is an offense that's built around their ability to knock down threes and let Bernardo be isolated on the block. Early in the year, they had 16 threes against St. Bonaventure. But as you said, 10 for 49 coming in the last two games, and they've clanged a bunch of them in the first half already here tonight. Well, these are three teams that I picked out today that the NCAA tournament comes out and they make the field. William & Mary's making almost 10 per ball game. Cornell out of the Ivy League could certainly be in the NCAA tournament. College of Charleston as well. All those club Brad, can change the game with their ability to shoot threes. The reason why I picked that out, Mississippi State comes in averaging 9.3 as well, but they have not shot it nearly that well the last couple of weeks. And again, Mike Washington taking the outside shot. He's kind of fallen in love with those long jumpers instead of working inside. And I think that drives Rick Stansbury a little bit crazy. This could be one of those NCAA tournaments that, that some weird stuff happens that first weekend. What I mean by weird stuff, a William and Mary could pull off an upset because they can knock down threes with great efficiency. College of Charleston could do it. Certainly Cornell could do it. And boy, the, you keep those numbers around making nine or ten per ball game. You are hard to defend on a one game and a neutral floor. Bernardo on that drive. Jimmy Joe wrapped his arm around and got called for his second foul. And that could be a big factor if Arkansas can go right at him, try to get a third foul on the big guy. That would take that factor, his defensive factor right out of the ball game in the remainder of the first half. And, and it's not easy to do, Brad, because he does a great job of keeping a cushion and keeping his body off of you. So you have to really go at him with a purpose because he's not going to attack you when you attack him. We asked John Pelfrey about that before the game. He said it's just so hard because he knows what he's doing defensively to not get in foul trouble. And we're going to have a foul on Beanock with the shot clock down to two. That was going to be a turnover waiting to happen for Arkansas. Instead, they've got a fresh clock. Shot clock winding down. And boy, I don't know. I, I don't know. Unless he said he tripped him and lost the dribble. But I, that, boy, I don't know, I don't know about that one. I don't think, I don't think it was Beanock's number 15 that was tripped. But anyway, he's still looking around as if to say, I don't know where you got me touching him, but apparently there was some contact. So Arkansas missed the free throw. That might be poetic justice, I guess. Deep boss, the point guard for Mississippi State with that basketball, Brad. He's taken 16 more shots than any other Mississippi State player in conference play. That's too many from the lead guard position. And he's been a little bit more under control so far in this game, and that's good. Number three in the room, the bottom of your screen. Nice spin move by Turner. Washington defensively, whether he got a piece of that or not, he kind of got trapped by the rim.